That's good. You made a mistake there and you caught it. That was good. You would have been less likely to make that mistake, though, if you had kept the numbers that you had at the beginning. You started by writing some numbers, and then you erased them, maybe because this is not a synthesis problem. But even for non-synthesis problems, the numbers can be very helpful. So let's see how the numbers help us here. Now, what type of mechanism do we expect to have happen here? Well, what row are we in in the table? The first methyl. That's right, because the alpha carbon, remember, this is not the alpha carbon. This is the alpha carbon in the electrophilic molecule. That's the methyl. And then which column are we in? That's right, this is tert butyl oxide, that really is a bulky base, but we're still SN2. There's no way this could be E2, because remember, E2 is when we form a pi bond between the alpha and the beta carbon. But this is a methyl, it doesn't have a beta carbon, so there's no way this could be an E2 reaction. So even with this bulky base, we don't need to worry about an E2 reaction happening here. Now, here's where the numbers would have come in handy. We can simply say, who's the number two atom connected to? Uh, the one, four, and three. And that's what you left out originally. Originally, you left out the oxygen. But when we put in the numbers, it's easier to articulate who's attached to who. And who's the oxygen attached to? A methyl group. That's right. Maybe I should have given this a number and called this the number five. So numbers are useful not just for synthesis, but anytime you have a complicated product to draw. Even though we had a bulky base here, we still didn't get E2 because we had a methyl substrate, and that can't do an elimination reaction. This was yet another example of our Williamson ether synthesis, an alkoxide with a haloalkane attacking an ether. mechanism would happen here, and then show the mechanism in the product. Looks like you're trying to use the table to predict the mechanism. That's good. In order to use the table, we have to identify the alpha carbon. Which carbon here is the alpha carbon? Two. Right. It's always a good idea to label the alpha carbon. Well, then which row of the table are we in? Um, we're in the last row. Tertiary. Yeah. Good. And which column? That's right. And what mechanism does that fit into? E2. Good. It's good that you were looking at the table and trying to figure out the mechanism. It looked like you were having some difficulty figuring out what the right mechanism was. It's, 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 um, is it going to um, form an ether? Well, we'll have to figure that out. Okay. But first of all, we know that we're going to do an E2. 
Now let's go, maybe you might uh, have forgotten how to draw the E2 mechanism, so let's go through that together. Well, now we're not using a nucleophile, we're using a base. Elimination uses a base. Who's our base going to be? The, uh, what is it? Who's the basic, who's the basic atom in this problem? The, uh, the negative oxygen. That's right. Does that mean it should be at a head or a tail? Tail. That's right. Clearly, anything with a negative charge should be at a tail. Right. Just like nucleophiles like to donate electrons, bases also like to donate electrons. Okay. Remember, the Lewis base definition of a base is something that wants to donate an electron pair. Now, what do bases do? Remember what the bronsted lowry definition of a base is. What is it that a base does? What makes it, what's the difference between a base and a nucleophile? A nucleophile joins a substrate. Mm -hmm. what, what does a base do? Uh, a base just... Um, I, 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 um, Thinking back to chemistry, what, what do acids and bases do? Accept and donate protons. There you go. Well, which one does a base do? Um, donates. Or... I always get it mixed up. So that's going to be important for the whole rest of the course. Going back to general chemistry, it's crucial to know the difference between acids and bases. What do acids do and bases do? Well, acids are the proton acceptors. Do you know whether this is an acid or a base? Um, that's an acid. Okay. And do you know whether this is an acid or a base? Base. Okay. Well, if you know those two things, then we should never have any trouble figuring out the difference between acids and bases. For example, well, 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 we'll see. For example, does this look like it wants to gain a proton or lose a proton? Um, it wants to lose a proton. Right. Well, what's the symbol for a proton, by the way? How would I write the symbol for a proton? What, 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 how do we write a proton in chemistry? Don't we write, don't we write protons like this? Have you seen the symbol used for protons? So protons are positive. Yeah. Well, clearly this doesn't want to gain any more protons. That would give it a positive two charge. Mm -hmm. Remember, nature doesn't like charges. Mm -hmm. Nature doesn't want this to have this positive charge. It wants it to get rid of the charge. So what did we decide? Does this want to gain or lose a proton? It wants to lose a proton. Right, so it wants to donate a proton. Well, what does hydroxide want to do? Gain or lose a proton? This wants to gain a proton because it has a negative charge, and it can get rid of that negative charge by gaining a proton. By the same token, we can review whether acids and bases want to gain or donate electrons. When you're ready, by the way, the name for this is hydronium. It's good to know the name for H3O+. H3O plus is hydronium. And OH minus is hydroxide. Well, does hydronium want to gain protons or lose protons? It wants to lose protons. Uh, yeah, that's right. I, I misspoke. I meant to ask, does hydronium want to gain electrons or does it want to lose electrons? It wants to gain electrons. To get rid of the positive charge. This is the symbol for electrons, E minus. Mm -hmm. Hydronium wants to gain electrons. Correct. And how about hydroxide? Does that want to gain or, or lose ele electrons? Lose. Right? Yeah, I have noticed it. it's pretty sad. A lot of people have taken years of chemistry and can't remember the difference between an acid and a base. Well, here's a very simple trick to decide which is an acid and which is a base. When I think of acids and bases, I just think of hydronium and hydroxide. Okay. I, at least for me, it's not very hard to remember that hydronium is an acid and hydroxide is a base. But then I know exactly how acids and bases behave, because I know that hydronium wants to donate a proton or gain electrons. And I know that hydroxide wants to gain protons or lose electrons. This is a very important trick then for telling the difference between an acid and a base. And a lot of students don't realize that acid-base chemistry is really crucial through the whole OCHEM class. Sure. So this was not just for general chemistry. We're going to be working with acids and bases now for the whole rest of the course. 
Well, hopefully this kind of solves the problem. Uh, think remembering the difference between an acid and a base. All you have to do is remember that hydroxide is a base and hydronium is an acid. And then if, my question to you was, do bases want to gain or uh, what, what do bases want to do? Well, we know hydroxide, because it's negative, will want to gain protons or lose electrons. That's the reason why bases are good things to put at tails of arrows, because they want to donate electrons. And what does this want to gain? And we, it helps us remember, again, this wants to gain a proton. So again, I would say to myself, well, hydroxide would want to gain a proton, so this wants to gain a proton. And it should really be obvious, because this is negative. Negative things want to gain positive charges. It certainly doesn't want to lose a positive charge. That would make it even more negative. Well, that, that was a detour, but that, that's a very important detour. 